In this video, we're going to be looking at Gaussian Blur in the Layer Effects Studio. This is the first video in a 10 part mini series where I'm going to be looking at the Layer Effects Studio and breaking down each effect one by one in each video, working on the same project and hopefully by the end of it you'll have a really good understanding of the Layer Effects Studio. Today's the Gaussian Blur, so let's get into it. My son just had his birthday and for his birthday he got this brilliant Sonic the Hedgehog Lego set. If you didn't know, myself and the family, we like a bit of Lego. Every YouTube video in the background at the start and at the end you'll see my shelf full of Lego. Lego. you'll see some bits of Lego at the side of the tutorials and we love Lego. We love this Sonic the Hedgehog Lego set and Seth, my son, has already started building it. In this Lego set we'll get this brilliant instruction book. So we have it with a bit of retro art of the first Sonic the Hedgehog and it tells you how to build this Sonic set. For today's purpose and for the next few videos actually I'm going to be looking at this here Sonic the Hedgehog. I was inspired by this. Seth showed me this instruction manual and I thought that's really cool. And then I thought, you know what? This here Sonic cover would make a great tutorial for a wee mini series that we're going to do. Or we're going to look at an affinity photo. We're going to be looking at the effects studio and all 10 effects in the effects studio. And by the end of this uh, 10 part series, this 10 part mini series, hopefully we'll have made this here, but not, not just like this. We're going to make the kind of like a real life version of this with the Sonic from the current films and a realistic background. And we'll, we'll try to make it as realistic as we can but while learning the different effects we can do in the effects studio so here we go as always we're just going to go into affinity photo and on this occasion we're going to start a new project just by hitting the plus icon we're going to go into new document we're going to choose a preset we're going to choose a web preset and we're going to scroll down under web to fhd which is full hd and Click OK. And again, two fingers just to pinch in and out. And we're just going to get a background photo now. And to do that, we're just going to go into Google Chrome. And I've already preloaded a website called unsplash.com. You might remember Unsplash from a few videos back where we looked for a subject with a brilliant hair so that we could try and cut it out. So that was Unsplash. At unsplash.com you can use these images. There's going to be a link on this image in the description below. And it's royalty free, which means we can download it and use it however we like. And I just want to say thanks to Sebastian. Sebastian, thank you for this photo. I went to unsplash.com, just typed in tropical. And after a bit of searching, I came across an image which I thought looked a bit like an image you might find in Sonic or a realistic version of uh, Green Hills. And... In another tab here, I've just typed in Sonic, and if we scroll down a wee bit, here's more or less the same image that was that was on the front cover of the Lego build set. That kind of image, the only thing we're missing is a bit of a waterfall, but we've got a, a tropical looking island, a bit of sea, we'll do something about this boat, lovely blue skies. So that, that, that looks like it could be a bit, a bit from Sonic. So if you just, uh, I've just clicked on it to make it big, but we can go down to here, original size, download, and then if I go into my files application, in my case, it's been downloaded in the Chrome folder, and here we are here. So we'll go back into Affinity Photo. I'm just going to bring up my files app, click on the photo by Sebastian, bring it over, move this out of the way, and if I have grids are snapping on, sorry, and I'll maybe just bring it down to the edges here, and maybe move it in the middle. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go back into Chrome actually, and that Sonic image we looked at, I'm going to hold my finger down, copy image, go back into Affinity Photo, holding down with one photo, paste, and I'm going to paste the Sonic image in. I'm going to make it lovely and big. And that's what we're looking at. I'll probably bring it to the top layer. See where the horizon is in it. Not that it really matters, but uh, let me move it up just, just a wee bit more. The horizon's roughly here in Sonic. Yeah, I think that looks good proportionally. It's just nice having the palm trees up here a wee bit. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look into a tool we've been using recently. is the in painting brush. 
So this wee boat, there's no boats in Sonic. Is there boats in Sonic? I can't remember, but there's a, there's going to be no boat, hopefully, in this Sonic image. And I just hadn't selected the image. So I've selected it. I'll click into it. I might change the feather. We'll see what it... Yeah, that's pretty good. M Paint and Brush does it again. That's before two fingers. Three fingers to redo. And that is exactly what we want. Brilliant. So we're just going to go into the FX Studio... The effects studio is down here on the right hand side with the wee FX for effects. The first one we're going to look at is Gaussian Blur. More or less what Gaussian Blur does is it will just make this image blurry. Now there's other ways to do this with adjustment layers which we'll look at in another video when we come to adjustment layers. But just as this is a mini series looking at the layer effects studio we're simply just going to tap the Gaussian Blur switch on. So that's it off. You know it's on with the when the blue when the blue dot appears and it's moved over to the right hand side and it's actually done nothing absolutely nothing the only thing it has done is down here at the bottom we're going to see radius and preserve alpha so radius again the affinity we're going to move our finger left and right and by moving it will blur it blur it quite a bit it doesn't with gaussian blur it doesn't take much to get big results and that would be too much also you can click into it and type a figure and sometimes there's presets here of numbers. There's no presets here on this occasion. Preserve Alpha, we'll look at in another way example because at the minute, well, you can see it in this. If we, if, we, if we make this really big, you can see Preserve Alpha. What it'll do is the borders are, are a bit white and that's not really what we're looking for. By hitting Preserve Alpha, boom, straight away that fills in the corners. So we'll maybe keep that on and we'll maybe bring it down to about 10, maybe 5. Really, with no Gaussian Blur, it looks pretty good. But for the sake of this tutorial, we'll maybe bring it 10. And that looks quite good. Now, I know in the original Mario one, or the original Mario, Sonic, Andrew, get your head in the game, son. In the original Sonic, it's not blurred out. You can see it all quite well. Again, we're going to try to make this fairly realistic. But just to keep the emphasis on Sonic and the logo, we're going to, in our version, we're going to blur it out. So we're just going to untick that. And that's more or less it for the Gaussian blur. I'm going to show you another wee example. And as an example, we'll go with, I did say a few videos ago, we'll be looking at this Star Wars poster quite a bit. And just for the purposes of teaching, we will go into this poster. So another example where I would use Gaussian blur is if we zoom in to this poster, you'll see these ships, these ships have a bit of a Gaussian blur on just to take the sharpness down and especially the ones in the distance or the ones further away I want to make them more blurry so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hide these I'm just gonna go into Chrome again I searched X-Wing PNG the X-Wing is the resistance in Star Wars and PNG means the background should be clear so just for fun I'm gonna click into one of these Hold down one finger, copy, we did copies, go back into Affinity Photo, one image, or one finger, and paste, and we'll move this layer just to the very, very top of our layers, or just below that one. So that looks pretty cool. We could have had the original ones, but uh, I just thought for the sake of the tutorial, we'll do something a wee bit different. And I like the way that overlaps the logo right in the center. Kind of makes it like, look like it's coming out at you. That's pretty cool. Uh, maybe this one here, one finger. Copy. Back into Affinity Photo, one finger. Paste, there it is there. And again, we'll bring that up to the top or up near the top again, just one finger on the image and drag it up. And we'll just bring it way down. So this here's really just a wee bit of photo compositing. This looks, this looks pretty cool, actually. Uh, 
I, I'm liking this. I know it's not faithful to the original poster, but it looks quite cool. So we've got this here, X-Wing Fighter, which is in focus. And I think that it looks well. I'm going to keep it in focus. This one here, we could keep it in focus, but realistically, if it's, if it's further back, it'll be a wee bit blurrier. And by going into effects, studio, hitting Gaussian blur. I don't want to do it too much. Three pixels is too much. One pixel. And I think that looks okay. Just so the viewer's eye will be in this one. And this here is just, it's just blend it into the background a wee bit better. And I'm actually going to select this. One finger, duplicate. Move it over here. And by going down on the left-hand side here, we'll go into the Transform Studio. And we haven't really looked at this too much. We'll maybe look at this on another video, but we'll click this wee icon. It just flips it. Now, I'd probably go in to Google and look for another PNG file of this, just so it doesn't look, it doesn't look as if it's been flipped. I would, I, would, I would make it look as if it's a different angle, but again, just for the purposes of speed and for this tutorial, I'll maybe bring it, there's no right or wrong here. It's just getting something that looks quite good. Yeah, maybe down there. And seeing it's further back, we'll go into the Layer Effects Studio, Gaussian Blur. We'll maybe make that two pixels. And again, it's, it's much blurrier. And just for fun, I'm going to click the Move tool, click into it, duplicate it again. I accidentally uh, took off the Gaussian Blur for that. But it reminded me of a good teaching point. If we click into this X wing, and you can click in the Layer Effects Studio and get into it that way. Or if you're in Layers, simply just double tap or, or tap once. Sorry, the FX icon there on Layers. See the wee FX. Just tap it, and that will bring us into the Layer Effects Studio. We Gaussian blur wasn't it three pixels? We made it nice and blurry, and then we'll go back to. This one here, the move tool, we'll make it really quite small. We'll maybe make it down here. There, FX Studio, and we'll maybe make that five, and that's going to be. It's going to be way blurry. And if I was doing this for compositing, I would actually change the color at least slightly, just so they're they're all the same color. I would keep this the color as it is, maybe this, but then these two I would lower a wee bit. And the only other wee thing I'm going to show you with Layer Effects Studio, if we click back into it, you'll see up here at the very top, Scale with Object. That's switched off at the minute. If we drag this up, the X wing will scale up. And it scales up, keeping the three pixels or the five pixels in this case, but you can see it a lot more than you could. Two fingers, two fingers, and down here. You can't really make out anything what that is. But when you scale this image up, the three pixel blur stays with this image. Now, if I go into layer effects and click scale with object, what this will hopefully do, well, we'll just show you, it will scale and it will keep the blur. It will keep it this blurriness. So here we go, or it should do anyway. Scale it up and it's kept the same amount of blurriness that it is in a small size. So when it's small, you can't really see what it is. When it's big, you still can't really see what it is. And if we were to go into layer effects and take this off, it will scale up as it was beforehand with just three pixels of Gaussian blur. So there we are. That's quite nice. It puts a different spin on the poster. I quite, I quite like it actually. And in the next video, we're going to continue with a series of making a realistic Sonic logo. So there you have it. Please like this video. Feel free to subscribe as there's going to be more videos like this coming out every week. Feel free to leave a comment below. I read and reply to each and every one. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.